All right, let's do a little, little bit of GameCube homebrew on the Wii. First, a little bit of explanation. There is no native Wii homebrew as of yet. The reason being is because the Wii uses an RSA encrypted uh, operating system. We have absolutely no understanding right now how to load native code on the Wii. But the Wii is GameCube 2.0. It's a GameCube with a faster drive, more memory, USB, Wi-Fi, all the technology that would be standard today. Now, because of that, it also has the GameCube compatibility mode, meaning all of the homebrew for GameCube will run directly on a Wii. The only problem is you need to get the action replay and the soft mod, which is kind of hard to get nowadays because we've all, if you've seen the previous segment about the, the GameCube soft mod, you'll understand why. Now, another problem is Nintendo has recently been uh, rolling out the 3.0 and the 3.1 update as of this. If you have a 3.0 update or higher of your Wii system settings, which you go right into your preferences and just take a look, you will not be able to load action replay. I don't know why they did this. It really didn't have any kind of impact on the bootleggers or the homebrew. It only had an impact on Daytel and Code Junkies. Don't know what to say about that. Now, huh. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, but getting inside the Wii, you're going to need special tools, mostly a tri-wing. Now, I got my hands on something called a Zuzen Access Toolkit. And this is a toolkit that comes with all of the current bits needed for opening practically anything. Uh, the top row has a whole bunch of the bits for uh, GameCube. It's got, uh, it's got Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 2. It's got the Nintendo security bit. It's got Torx, security Torx, Phillips, flathead. It also comes with a driver. It comes with uh, this thing over here is the slide tool used for getting open to Xbox 360. And now, if you're actually getting inside of your, your consoles and doing a lot of mods and hacks and tweaks and such, getting a Zuzen uh, tuning kit or a Zuzen tool kit uh, probably costs about 20, 25 bucks. Definitely worth the investment. I was actually able to go in and do a lot of repairs to my N64 and also my Super Nintendo. The only qualms, the only complaints, and the only thing that makes me want to piss and moan about this is that the bits rust very easily. I've kept them inside of this case, in my lab, and a lot of them are actually starting to rust. It happens when you have slightly inexpensive tools. The second thing that kind of annoyed me about this kit was I wasn't able to go and get the, the game bit down the shaft of my Virtual Boy, so I couldn't open up my Virtual Boy to do any kind of mods, tweaks, or any kind of anything with that, so I'm shit out of luck. But for everything else, besides the Virtual Boy and the fact that it rusts, and the tweezers that they come with, I, I wouldn't even use these to stab someone in the eye with. They just suck. I'd, I'd go for like $2, I'd rather go to the local pharmacy and pick up a pair of tweezers that you'd use to go and pluck some, some gay guy's eyebrows or your sister's eyebrows or something. Now, back to the Wii. Now, there are two ways of actually getting code to run, GameCube code to run on the Wii. Soft mod, which I've explained, you should have already seen the segment on the soft mod. Hard mod works in the same way a GameCube hard mod works. A chip talks to the drive controller to authenticate the disk session. Exactly works in the same way that the GameCube hard mod works. This will also let you boot, uh, cop, uh, this will also let you copy your own games and play backups. Now, I'm not endorsing software piracy whatsoever. I'm not endorsing you going on the internet and downloading your Wii games so you can play them, because a lot of people have actually been wanting to go and download copies of Wii games. But the games themselves come, come with system updates. So if you have a PAL or, uh, or an Australian or whatever, if you're not in an NTSC region and you get an NTSC copy of a game that updates, let's say you have a PAL, a PAL console and you download an NTSC game and that NTSC game actually has an update, it's going to update your PAL console with an NTSC firmware and it's going to brick your shit. It's going to turn your Wii into a load of crap. It's going to be a, a white piece of shit that you can do nothing with. There is no recovery from this. So heed my warning. If you want to use this to play imported games from other regions, or you want to go and copy, read, or download your games from the internet, and you turn your Wii into a wonderful brick, fuck you. You deserve it. You, that's my only warning about that. Now, um, Nintendo has been rolling out updates. Whether they can detect the, the mod chips, I'm not sure. There are multiple versions of the drive controller, so determining on which serial number and which model and which region of Wii you have, you have to make sure you get a chip that works for your console. Do your research. I'll put some links and I'll put some show notes up. Nintendo has recently not only rolled out the 3.0 update, but they've rolled out a brand spanking new chipset called a D2C chipset. And there's only one compatible mod chip right now as of this recording is called the D2C key. And unfortunately, I cannot show you that chip because 
putting it in, a, in, a, in an American console is actually a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. I can't get the chip. I can't show you. Sorry. If someone gives me their Wii console and the chip, I'll be glad to do a video tutorial on how to install the chip. But um, on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being you can use the tip of your dick to solder, uh, uh, 10 being uh, you're going to need some pretty epic soldering skills, I'd give the install about a 15. Because you have to install 30 wires directly onto a very small surface mount drive controller chip. Not fun. Also, if you actually have a slightly older console, on my case, when I put the chip in my console, which I'll sh uh, isn't shown in the video, but you'll get an understanding of the size concept, I, uh, Nintendo actually started cutting the legs off of the drive controller in which the mod chip attaches to. So, you'll have to go and take a Dremel or some kind of high-speed rotary tool and drill or sand into the top of the chip, revealing the traces inside the chip itself, so you can solder directly to that. On a scale from 1 to 10, that is a 10. It is definitely doable if you have the experience. I'll also show some pictures of, and I'll put on the, on the show notes, some links leading to pictures of what that was like. But I'm going to get to the video side and let me show you what it's like installing a Wii key mod chip. Now a little bit about the mod chips before we get into it. Uh, most mod chips have the same features. I don't like the Wii key Corporation. They're very slow to release their updates. Their updates are lackluster. They don't always work and they promise things that they don't provide. Um, I do not endorse WeeKey, and the only reason I got a WeeKey is because it was the most inexpensive and it let me do all my homework to a lesser extent. It does actually have a lot of problems playing backups and bootlegs, so don't play backups and bootlegs. There are open source Wii mod chips. You can make your own. The source code is completely open source, and the hex code can be put directly onto a microcontroller and then just slammed into the Wii. Go on the show notes, go on the forums. If you have the competence to understand what, what, a, what a microcontroller is, I'll assume that you know how to program them and you know how to play with them. So go on the show notes, go on, on the forums, hit the show notes, I'll send the links to that so you can, if you don't want to buy a mod chip, you'll have to, you can make one. But these are drive controller chips, so if you have a D2C chipset, these won't work. Give it time, I'm sure they'll figure it out. Let's get over to the hardware side and get this Wii modded. Here we have in front of us a Wii and a Wii optical drive. I'm not going to go into the details on how to take apart your, your Wii, there's plenty of information online about that. Necessary tools are a soldering iron. I would highly recommend a 15 watt. Do not use 35, which I'm using. Um, I'm skilled at this, so I'm confident that I won't screw anything up. Solder. Um, this is actually kind of really thick solder. You might want to get some thinner stuff. Desoldering braid, because shit happens. And you might need some really, really thin magnet wire or 30 gauge wire. This, in fact, is called Kynar wire. And we're going to need a mod chip of choice. In our case, we're using a clone of the Wii key. This is a United States quarter. Just to show you the size comparison of a quarter compared to the, compared to the chip itself. Once you take your Wii apart, there's going to be a drive controller on the chip. Make sure your chip is compatible with your drive controller. To this day, most, most if not all chips, including the homebrew, are uh, compatible with the drive controller. Now, your chip is going to fit on top of a specific spot on top of the Wii controller. If you have a homebrew one, you're going to have to go and solder in some wires using 30 gauge Kynar wire. Of course, when you go and select a chip, make sure you're getting the features that you require. Um, upgradability is nice. Um, make sure it's not too difficult to install. So we're going to go to an alternate shot and I'll show you installing this uh, really psychotic chip. Oh, but before beforehand, if you're watching this segment and you're about to go and run out and get a Wii because of all the awesome homebrew stuff you can do on a Wii, don't. Um, Nintendo's actually been chopping off the pins on this chip, which when we zoom in, I'll show you. They've been ch they've been chopping off the pins of the drive controller chip, where the uh, chip eventually leads into. And if you have to do that, if they do that, you have a Wii that can be identified. Or if you take it apart and it has the the pins chopped off like mine was, you will actually have to take your Dremel or a high speed rotary tool and sand away above those three pins to reveal the tracks. And if you are not an elite soldering god, I would not suggest doing this yourself. As you can see, the chip itself is designed to specifically fit on an area of the board. Now what I've already done was uh, fill in one of these little holes with a little bit of solder. That way, what this is going to allow me to do is place my chip precisely where it needs to go then heat this pad up and then once you remove it, now that chip is firmly in place. That will not move around, so now you can work on it. Then we get the second, the second uh, hole, and that is going to be our power right there. Then you have these three points. Now, if you, can you see how fine these pins are? 
As I said, Nintendo has been actually chopping off three of the pins on this chip. This is the drive controller chip. The mod chip is going to tell the drive controller chip to authenticate the disc, disc session and allow you to load your alternate code. Now, by chopping off these three pins, the, the, the mod chip can't communicate to the drive controller to tell it so. So you're going to have to take a Dremel or some kind of rotary tool and sand into the top on the edge of this connector. And uh, unless you're really good with uh, precision tools, that is a very difficult task to do. Now from this point on, it's just a matter of tacking down the rest of the wires. Um, easier said than done for some. Like this, this soldering iron's tip is way too big. I honestly don't think I'm going to get it done. There's one. And of course, if you get these, these uh, solder spikes, it's going to take a little bit of a desoldering braid. There you go. Nice and neat. There's one. This one's being a bastard, so I'm going to take some 30 gauge Kynar wire, and I forgot my wire clippers. So now that I got wire cutters, what I've done, where am I? What I've done is I made a small little hook out of some 36 gauge Kynar wire, or 36 gauge. You don't need Kynar, and what this is going to do is I'm going to solder it to the um, little foot. And I'm gonna I'm gonna loop it back over, and that's gonna help me make my uh, my connection. And then with our wire cutters, I'm just going to clip it. Wow, these wire cutters suck. Anyway, and that's the process. Do it for the next two wires, and your mod chip is complete. As you saw, the installation isn't very hard. From a scale, again, from 1 to 10, I'd give it about a 5, maybe 6. It's not moderately hard. I think the hardest part is first buy your Wii. Then, get your toolkit. Open your Wii and find out what drive controller you have. You can also check by going online and checking the serial number. There are websites that'll actually, you can punch in the, the serial number, it'll tell you supposedly what chipset you have. Then get a chip that'll work for your chipset. Make sure, 100%, the chip that you buy not only fits in your Wii, but works for your chipset. Again, not endorsing piracy, not endorsing downloading your games. You do actually have a high risk of turning your, your Wii into a brick by going online, downloading a foreign game. That game might actually have, uh, have a software update. That software update could render your console inoperable because a lot of PAL people get NTSC games the NTSC, NTSC game updates the PAL software with an NTSC update and then just turns it into a brick. So, there is a lot of risk with this. If you honestly don't feel that you're capable of, find someone that can.